a group uh, that formed here in Washington of veterans who were particularly disgruntled and saw in the design a negative political statement. And they began a campaign to discredit the design in the eyes of Secretary Interior Watt. And this became very dirty. In November, they circulated a document alleging that one of the jurors in the competition was a communist and that four had been active anti-war protesters. We tried to keep this communist allegation out of the press, but there had to be somebody low and mean enough to publicize it, and it turns out that that was Pat Buchanan, a congressman from Illinois named Henry Hyde, who happened to represent the neighborhood where I grew up, uh, read it, claimed that he had never heard of the memorial before, and wrote a letter to all the Republicans in the Congress and ask them to write to President Reagan and have him tell Secretary Watt to block the design. Their idea was to take the design and change the color to white, put it, quote, above ground, and plant a flagpole at the vertex of the walls. And they were saying that, you know, we could do this by ourselves without changing the original concept. And they actually worked up a sketch of this white fence with a flagpole pointed at the vertex that they were waving around and wanted us to do. General Michael Davison, who had actually commanded the Cambodia invasion and supported the Maya Lin design, stood up and said, well, why couldn't we keep the design as it is and add a statue to the site? And that seemed to be the key. In the first week in January, Secretary Watt sent us a letter saying that he was going to review the design personally again, and by the end of January, he had given us an ultimatum that unless we compromised with a group of detractors, that he would indeed kill the project. Unless they approve of those three changes, there will be no Vietnam Memorial here in Washington, D.C. Secretary Watt's letter put us in a very difficult position because he was in a position to abort this design, and I wasn't at all sure if this one was scuttled, what would come in its place. I felt that one had to be pragmatic, because if one allowed oneself simply to be martyred on this issue, what would end up? We'd either have no Vietnam Memorial, or we'd have some piece of schlock. The people who were trying to stop the memorial from being built, these are very mean spirited people. Uh, some were very evil people, in my opinion. They were looking for anything they could do to stop construction of the memorial. Uh, the American Legion and many veterans groups like that, uh, who were very conservative, never fought us with the design. The only people who fought us with the, with the design was uh, a small group of very well-connected people politically. Uh, who also had considerable expertise in uh, basically lobbying and uh, public relations. Why, Ms. Lynn, do you think there has been so much frustration, so much bitterness, so much acrimony? I think, in a sense, it's a part of the Vietnam controversy that's carried on. And you could prob probably take almost any design submitted and it would evoke the same emotions as I think Mr. Scruggs was pointing out earlier. His choice to build a memorial at this time comes soon enough so that the anger and the frustration carried over, and I think that is playing into this memorial. Is, is it possible that the three of you symbolically can bury the hatchet as far as you're concerned? I would hope so. The interest in this subject had mounted so that we had to move into the cash room of the Department of the Treasury in order to accommodate the media and the public that all wanted to get in on this act, on both sides of the issue of whether or not a flag and a sculpture should be added to the design, and if so, where. The meeting will come to order. We are reconvening the stated meeting of the Commission of Fine Arts. We have completed our agenda now, except for one outstanding item, uh, consideration of some new proposals for additions to the design of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial.
Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, I speak as an individual, a member of, from the general public. What are the memorable images from the war in Vietnam? A gorilla shot at point-blank range. A naked girl afire, running, screaming down a dusty road. I think Maya Lin was right in going beyond these kinds of images. She resolved all the pain and conflict of that unhappy time in a simple message of sacrifice and quiet heroism. No, I still don't like that wall, but the compromise means I'll hold my peace. We'll accept a statue and this, the flag. The statue is a blunt appraisal of the way we were. I am moved by it. Mr. Chairman, I'm Jim Brodnick. I'm the local coordinator for Vietnam Veterans Against War. Not all veterans groups approve of the additional elements. The design is such that I can go in and I can remember. And that's the only thing that has to be done. Maya Lin, the architect designer who won the original competition. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. The original design gives each individual the freedom to reflect upon the heroism and sacrifice of those who served. It is not a memorial to politics or war or controversy, but to all those men and women who served. It weaves the individual with the freedom of reflection and contemplation at a place where he is at once part of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and a part of our memorialized history. These intrusions, which treat the original work of art as no more than an architectural backdrop, reflect an insensitivity to the original design's subtle spatial eloquence. And the statues, merely eight feet tall, are taller than most of the wall for most of its length. These intrusions rip apart the meaning of names, destroying the meaning of the design. I am not approving or disapproving of the sculpture per se. I disapprove of the forced melding of these two different memorials into one memorial. Thank you. Thank you very much. We uh, understand, I think, the degree to which there is a felt need in this country for healing. And we want to be part of that process. We want to help. Uh, we want to help heal the wounds. And we certainly want to help uh, honor and recognize all those uh, who served in Vietnam. When we deliberate about anything on we that felt side, a flag so. certainly could be incorporated. We felt that if we we're going to do it, it should be done as an entrance experience and to have the sculptures in this relationship with the wall. That was the breakthrough. Uh, we had found a solution that seemed to maintain the integrity of the original design and still satisfy those who felt that these other elements were indispensable. You see it as two separate memorials. I see it as separate memorials. I did not conceive of those statues. You were fighting against standards. You were fighting against traditional viewpoints. And I think that's what art does to a certain degree. It's always pushing the envelope. You're pushing it past its known definition, and you're going to get a lot of people who are going to fight it. I mean, I think that's one of the prices you pay. Thank you.
me, a hero is somebody who is unselfish, you know, who does not have the big ego, who is not uh, a mean-spirited type of person, but of course who will fight and many times becomes a hero because uh, he or she was willing to fight. Maya epitomizes everything, I think, that's uh, uh, good about uh, our country. Uh, you know, she won this competition uh, very, very fairly. And uh, very honestly. But uh, she was treated very poorly. Some of the opponents uh, made some innuendos uh, about her nationality of uh, being Asian. And, uh, that was a very ugly thing, and uh, I'm very sorry she had to put up with that.